Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for tuning in to 91.1 WRMU. We are just moments away from the first week of the NCAA playoffs as Mountain Union gets set to take on Washington and Lee for the first round. But beforehand, we have an interview with the special teams unit. We've got Andy Riemann, Adam Snyder, and Alex Louthen. Guys, how are we doing today? Great, and yourself? Doing great, guys. And uh, first to kick it off, um, you know, the, the positions, guys, that may be overlooked. I mean, Andy with the long snapping, Adam... Uh, for you punting and Alex, obviously the kicker. Um, but these positions uh, just come so valuable uh, for this team. And Andy, starting with you as the long snapper, uh, take us through your technique or repetition you go through as the long snapper. Uh, basically every week uh, we have a pretty set schedule, so I come out to practice and uh, do the same stuff, same warm-up drills, same uh, hand placement drills, and uh, get ready. I try to make uh, every rep in practice as uh, similar to a game rep as possible. But, uh, I mean, my job's uh, a lot simpler than these guys. I'm, I'm just out here trying to set them up uh, to have a good kick on every snap. So uh, they pretty much do all the hard work for me once I, uh, I set them up. And then, you know, Alex, for you, you know, uh, teach, take me through if, if you ha- if to teach somebody how to kick. Uh, just explain your techniques when it comes to kicking the ball. Well, I mean, every kicker's different. They have their different techniques and forms, and that just comes with the name of the game. I mean, it's a craft in itself, and it's a lot about repetition and actually years of kicking in order to master that craft. But uh, like Riemann said, it's once you get the hang of it, it comes naturally to you. And, you know, Adam, for you, same thing goes. What technique do you go through? You know, it's a lot of repetition, you know, especially with punting. Uh, you got to be straight with uh, kicking. You're crossing over a lot, so... It's more of just making sure everything's aligned each and every time and that, you know, hopefully you get a great snap because there's a lot of variables that go in. But Andy does a pretty good job with that every once in a while. You know, we got to get on him. <laughs> you know, Adam, uh, for you, you have this Australian rugby-style sty- t- type of uh, punting. Uh, discuss why you prefer to punt this way and what advantages does it bring when you punt? So, you know, it's really unique. Um, you know, Coach literally gives me a lot of range with this. Uh, I could either kick a high spiral with this rugby or I could kick a low line drive, get the ball on the ground. So it's uh, the low line drive is mainly get the ball on the ground, try to get no return. If so, try to get a turnover with the guy trying to catch it. Um, with the deep ball on the rugby style, it's just trying to get that ball up in the air, get the uh, return team just a different look and just uh, change it up. And, you know, Alex, looking at you, you've been a reliable kicker here for Coach Karras and the Purple Raiders. So far on the season, you are 14-17 of 17 with the field goal, 70-71 of 71, uh, with PATs. What steps do you take to becoming a consistent kicker? Well, it definitely starts with the line up front and as well as Riemann, uh, my, hold, or Riemann my snapper, and first the holder. Without them, I couldn't even get the job done, let alone the offense putting me in the op- uh, giving me the opportunity to actually kick those field goals and extra points. But um, it is just a craft, and without them, I couldn't even do my job. So, And, Andy, for you, a very special uh, award to you, or invitation, I should say. You were invited to play in one of the top senior all-star games in college football. In January, you will have the opportunity of participating in the NFLPA Collegiate Bowl. What did this invite mean to you? And discuss a little bit more in depth about this honor. Um, it was really unexpected, honestly. I didn't expect uh, that to uh, to come. It just showed up. Coach Karras uh, sent me a text to come see him, and I uh, I went to and talked to him about it. Uh, it's a uh, it's huge honor. I, I believe I'm the only uh, D3 guy that got invited to this this year. Uh, it's going to be with some of the top athletes in the country. Uh, guys from all over the nation are going to be there. Uh, so it's just an exciting opportunity. Um, Extremely, extremely blessed to uh, have the opportunity to uh, have another game in January. Not a lot of people get to do that. So, uh, but uh, extremely big opportunity for me. I'm just thankful for the uh, the committee to uh, select me to play in that game. And Alex and Adam, you've touched on it. Andy snapping you in the football. Uh, you guys are known as the fourth down army, obviously. And uh, discuss the importance of being on the same page when it comes uh, to the special teams unit and with Andy. Adam, let's start with you on that one. Well, it really starts with uh, I call out the punt, and you know Andy's already too focused about getting a perfect snap, so really got to make sure he's uh, on the same page with that. As well as we like to have fun, you know, 
as long as he's loose and fun, I, it, our whole uh, fourth down army on the punting side is just a great unit. I mean, we joke around when we go into punting, we say send it, you know. Shout out to Barstool there, but, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's more about having fun, making sure he's loose, making sure I'm loose, and that, that'll equal a great punt. And Alex, for you. Yeah, I think uh, our special teams unit as a whole is the best in the country, uh, let alone the OAC. But especially when it comes to PAT and field goal operations, everything has got to click. Uh, and it makes Fritz and I, my job much easier having a great long sniper like Greenman, being able to get pretty much ideally perfect short snaps to where Fritz can put the ball down, laces are out, ready to go. So um, with first job, first being able to do that easily, I can kick the ball a lot better. And Adam, for you this season, you know, not that much action, just uh, with this, such an efficient offense. But when your number has been called, you have answered to help your team in the field pos- position game. Uh, this season, you have had 28 punts. All together, that's added up to about 1,043 yards. Seven of them have been inside the 20 yard line. Like I said, with the efficient offense, it's not necessary that we've needed a punt. But how do you stay prepared in case you're needed on those punts? Yeah, that's, that's great. Um, it's hard sometimes, you know, because you're so into the game. You're you know your offense is going to score, but then sometimes, you know, stuff happens. It's football, you know. A uh, guy could come unblocked. So it's really about me knowing the situation on the field, being under, being able to understand, all right, uh, we're going to run the ball here. We're probably going to have on left hash, right hash. Just being in the game uh, and just staying loose. Andy helps me out a lot, you know. Third down, second down, I'll go take a punt in the net. He'll get his long snap ready. And uh, right then and there, we're focused, ready to go on fourth down, ready to go out there and on a good ball and uh alex for you uh, you've played at alabama state you also played at new mexico state uh discuss your experiences playing with both these programs yeah it was a, a good experience um i play, played a couple good big games uh and it was nice to get those jitters out of the way had a couple kickoffs uh lsu stadium and that was that uh, i played at florida and um, those are big time schools as well as hit a couple pats my freshman year at kentucky but um Coming here to D3 Mount Union, I love this school right now and um, glad to be a part of the program. And, you know, Adam, uh, take us through uh, what you have to do for a punt. And do you prefer a hang time or a just a line drive punt? I know we already talked about, you know, Coach already gives you that, that option of whatever you want to do. But what do you rather prefer when you're out there to punt? So when I get out there, you know, it really I, – I just look at that return, man, and I'm like – yeah, I look at him and like, all right, he's short. He he doesn't think I have anything. So then I just want to line drive him and get it right past him. And then if he's deeper, I'm like, all right, he respects me. I'm going to attempt to hit this ball as high as I can to make sure he fair catches it and give my ch- guys a chance to get down there and just surround him and make sure nothing goes wrong with that. And, Andy, for you, you know, as a long snapper, it's like an offensive lineman. You don't receive much atten- attention unless you mess up. So there is a lot of jitters that comes with that position. Just explain how you're able to handle that pressure and, uh, you know, get those snaps off. Um, well, I think uh, being a specialist in general, you're a kicker, a punter, a snapper, whatever you are, you got to be extremely loose on the sidelines. Uh, I don't know if you ever saw me in my pregame routine. I, I don't have headphones in. I'm not trying to get jacked up. I'm just staying as loose and level-headed, as calm as possible. Um, and I think that goes uh, for these guys, too. They stay extremely calm and loose. Um, and you just got to go out there and put the pressure aside and just relax. Um, the more relaxed you can be uh, and the more you can envision this as a practice, like as, as you're in practice, and take the pressure away, that's that's how you have to be to be successful as a specialist. Now, guys, uh, I've asked your teammates the last couple of weeks. I've always found it interesting uh, how players end up here at Mountain Union, you know, what really drew them here. Uh, first, we'll start with you, Alex. You know, you come from Georgia. How did you find Mountain Union? Well, uh, I was actually looking to transfer to get closer to home from New Mexico State. I mean, it's my dad. He lives in West Virginia about three hours down the road, and I was trying to get home. And without losing eligibility, I, trans- I had to go to a D3 school. I emailed Whitewater, Wisconsin. I emailed Mount Union. Uh, Whitewater emailed first and said, hey, our roster's full. We can't take you. Long story short, emailed VK and said, we'll take you. So here I am. Well, hey, we're glad to have you. Better <laughs> than being in Whitewater. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and uh, for you, uh, you know, with uh, you, Andy, you come from uh, Mount Vernon. You know, explain, you know, obviously Ohio kid. How did you find Mount Union? Um, actually, Coach Dart, who's uh, 
now at uh, Western Kentucky coaching. Uh, he recruited me out of high school to uh, play O line here initially, um, and I just made. Uh, I came in here and I uh, was as a freshman. I started a long snap for the JV team. I uh, started to get really good at that, and then just kind of transitioned away from playing offensive line here. Lost a lot of weight. Uh, Got in a lot better shape to snap and just kind of worked on that uh, over the summers and the off seasons until I was really good at it. And uh, now I'm here. Um, I think what kind of drew me is just the national championships and the, the tradition of this program. And Adam, same question. Uh, you coming from Baltimore. How'd you come here to Mount Union? Well, it's really funny you say that. Uh, I'm actually from Baltimore, Ohio. Oh, so, Baltimore, so, Ohio. Yeah, My yeah. bad. I read that so, wrong. Yeah, so from, I'm from, <laughs> from Columbus. Um, but I actually was looking to play baseball, and, you know, I ended up hurting my knee in my senior uh, season. So that kind of fell through, and I kind of went back through the recruiting process, looking at Ashland, Mount Union, Otterbein, uh, Finley, and it really just came down to uh, VK sitting down with me and, and him explaining my film back to me and how detailed he was able to, you know, explain what was happening within the film just really drew me to the program. Awesome, guys. And, uh, Alex, for you, uh, you had a season-long kick of 45 yards, that coming from Marietta. Uh, but what is the furthest that you have been able to kick a field goal, whether that's been in-game or in practice? Um, in-game this season, like you said, it was a 45-yarder. And um, in practice, I've had a few long kicks. I think my longest is somewhere somewhere around a 67. Um, but I've yet to hit that in a game. So, I mean, I, it's just about, all about the opportunities mm -hmm. and where our offense is on the field and getting us down there into a scoring, scoring position. And, you know, the the big thing is for the offense, I mean, there's been times where you guys been around the 30-yard line, and it's been a tough decision. But um, for you, you know, when it comes down to that, when you're in that inside that 30-yard range uh, in an opponent's territory and you're called upon on a field goal, you know, what is going through your head as far as when you're going out on the field? Can you, Is it, you know, jitters of making the field goal, or is it more of just your technique of going through the motions to get a kick? Uh, yeah, like uh, Riemann touched on earlier, it's really about trying to act as if, your practice is in your game um, and the fact that you kick the same ball every single time. So I don't really think about jitters. I just think about making the kick and going through with my form and trusting the process of the snap hold and the kick and getting the block off. And, you know, Adam, for you, I mean, last season I remember you had about a 65-yard punt against Johns Hopkins in the playoffs. But for you, you know, could you punt the length of the field? Is, is there any limit for you? Uh, I mean, there's definitely times where wind can help, but, I mean, it really comes down to how well I can get a hold of the ball and how well I can stay loose during the kick because, you know, sometimes you just get out there and you try to overkick and it, it, it doesn't come out right. So it's, it's all about being loose. And, I mean, if I get a hold of the ball, it, it possibly <laughs> could. Who knows? You know, there's always a chance. So, you know, guys, last weekend, what a matchup it was. 31-27 win over John Carroll. Got that revenge uh, from last season. Um, Andy, let's start with you on this one. What were the emotions like in the locker room and especially on the field uh, during that John Carroll game? Uh, I think everybody was just ready uh, to get to play this team again. I think we really uh, had hopes last year at the end of the season that we would meet up again in the national championship game to, uh, so we wouldn't have to wait a whole year to play this team again. But uh, it, was, it was a long time coming. I think everybody was really waiting on this week all year. I know that we played nine games before this uh, but I can tell you from the first day of camp, sights were set on this game. Uh, every game before this, you know, was a stepping stone. We had to win all those games to get. It wouldn't have been the same if we didn't get to this game at nine and zero to improve the ten and zero. But I think everybody has been waiting for this game since uh, about the first week of the playoffs uh, last year when we had to travel. Uh, this team made us travel for four straight playoff games. We could have had those games at home. Maybe had more favorable matchups. We played some really tough teams in the playoffs uh, because we got our, of how our seeding fell after that loss. So uh, it, was, uh, it was a long time coming. It was a, a good team win, uh, and it was a good uh, good team to get us ready for the playoffs. The team's a lot better than a 6-4 and four team, I believe they are now. Uh, they dropped a couple games to OAC schools that I think that they easily could have won, and they should have been 8-2 and two with their only losses coming to uh, two of the top three teams in the nation right now. Uh, so I think that that game really is going to get us ready for next week and the weeks to come. And Alex, for you. Yeah, I think uh, this week we were really locked in. Um, like every other week, we 
prepare the same way, but I do believe there was a little bit extra oomph going into Saturday, knowing that this is a big rivalry game, and obviously everybody knows the result of last year, and we wanted to make sure that we were on top of the OAC again this year and uh, let JCU know that we want to be on top of the hill in the terms of the D3 football world. And same thing goes for you, Snyder. How do you feel? You know, coming in as a freshman and being able to start as a freshman, you know, I was able to be around Coach Chef, Hank, and yeah. Lally, mm-hmm. and they really started my passion for this rivalry game, you know. It, it, that's all it is, is a rivalry. Mm-hmm. And then go and then losing to them last year, you know, it, it takes your breath away yeah. in the moment. And, you know, it, it just gets under your skin. It's just something you think about, you know, and especially in the summer. We came back from this summer – you know, way better than we did uh, after we won the national championship. We just had a chip on our shoulder, and we were ready to go. It didn't it didn't matter if we were playing Wilmington, Ohio Northern, or anyone. It was JCU thought the whole season, and it just felt tremendous after that game to go down that locker room and then chant with our head coach, head coach, mm-hmm. trainers, everyone. It was just amazing for our program to get back that OAC title. Yeah, it was a true rivalry game. I mean, that game was uh, absolutely incredible. And to come away with a close game uh, like it was, I mean, that's definitely a, a confidence bo- booster. And, guys, let's look into that first game of the NCAA playoffs for you. The new season begins now for you. Uh, and, uh, Alex, let's start with you on this. You guys are taking on Washington and Lee in the first round. What do you guys believe will be the keys to victory against the Generals? Um, well, I've done a little bit of scouting on them, and they are definitely a run-happy team. Um, they only pass the ball somewhere around 59 yards per game and have over 420 rushing yards a game, mm-hmm. so I think stopping the run will definitely be a key to success this week. Um, it'll, it'll be a fast game, I think, with them running the ball so much um, and us shutting them down. So we'll see how the game turns out, but we expect a win. Adam, for you. Um, it, it comes down to two things for me. One, starting off fast. I yeah. think if we start off mm-hmm. fast here at Mount Union Stadium, we'll be able to shut them down quick, hopefully get their hopes down quick, and we can just keep rolling all day. And secondly, I think we got to come out with the same energy and same motivation as we did with JCU last week. Uh, you know, that some some games we don't come out like that. You know, we just have to carry on that uh, energy we had last week. And Andy, for you? Uh, I think we got to win the special teams phase of the game. I think last week we lost the special teams phase of the game, especially on uh, – kickoffs they had two huge kickoff mm-hmm. returns against us that really put them right back in the game we had them up 17 17 0 and we really gave them momentum put them right back in the game um and they just outperformed on us overall on the on the special teams uh so i think that we need to come out have a have a crisp week of practice on special teams um we gotta put our uh, special teams players in a good position to make plays with our uh, our kicks and our uh, punts this week so I think we got to clean that up a little bit, and then I think that we're going to win the special teams phase of the game this week, and that'll be the difference. Uh, you'll see a huge field field position difference because of uh, our ability to cover the kickoffs and cover the punts this week. So you guys, you know, football, not a stranger to you. I mean, you guys have been playing it for quite some time now. Uh, Andy, I mean, you've already dis- hit on it. You know, you don't really wear headphones. You don't really listen to music. But, uh, you know, guys, take us through your game day routines. You know, what gets you ready for game day? Adam, we'll start with you on this one. Well, all right, it starts off with my, uh, our walk to the calf, you know, go around our chapel. You know, it's always a great way to be with the team. You know, everyone focuses in right there. Start off with my uh, Captain Crunch, you know, delicious cereal. <laughs> and I, I always have to go back and watch game day, mm-hmm. you know, just loosen up a little bit. You don't want to be too tense before game. Then go down to the locker room, stretch, uh, listen to some, uh, you know, the Friday night light music, the instrumental. Oh, something about that just gets me juiced. Go out there, me and Andy joke around for a little bit before uh, we start our warm-up punting. Yeah, do our warm-up and run out there with the team ready to go. Alex, for you? Yeah, I mean, it's I I pride myself on having a very strict uh, schedule when it terms of game day operations and what I do, and I do the same thing every single week. Uh, and if I don't, I, I get a little bit superstitious about it. And uh, last week I didn't have my long sleeve black uh, for warm ups, and that <laughs> that uh, really irked me. So I was making sure I had it this week. So, um, but just doing the same thing every week, I think, really keeps a level head on my shoulders. And Andy, for you? Yeah, uh, I don't really have a, a set tradition. Uh, I don't think that that has uh, for me really any out out um, outcome on the game. So uh, these guys getting there. They're set traditions, and I kind of make fun of them for it. But, uh, yeah, just uh, trying to stay as relaxed as possible the night before the game and into the game, just keeping a clear mind, level head, and just relaxed um, through my stretch and warm-ups. It's, uh, it's no, it's no uh, new thing for me. I think, you know, 
I think we made me and uh, Snyder made our uh, 40th start. I want to say yep. uh, oh, last wow. uh, yeah. last week. So uh, it's nothing new to us. Um, we're just doing the same thing we've been doing since day one, staying relaxed. So the special teams unit definitely a relaxed bunch of guys as they get ready to take on Washington and Lee in the first week of the NCAA playoffs. I want to thank Andy Riemann, Adam Snyder, and Alex Louthen today for their interview interview as they get ready to take on the Generals. Keep it locked in here on 91.1 W.